for our first exercise, let's try something simple and let's build this illy little macchiato bottle. Uh, let's fire up Blender. Step number one, we always have to make sure that inside the scene we have the metric system selected because this is going to make actually the work a lot easier. Step two, we would like to bring in the background image. So inside the 3D view, you can press N in case you do not see the property panel and then click on background images, open that triangle, click on add image, whoops, one too much, click open desktop and here's the illy bottle. Click open and there it is. So let's see what else we can do with this. So we can restrict actually the image to certain views. For example, currently I'm in top view. I would like to only see this one in front view. So now you see it's restricted to the front view. And if I press one on my keypad, I see the image. However, we also see that this image is way too big. Plus this is actually a photo. So it is perspectively distorted, proportionally not really usable for kind of like to work with it as a blueprint, but we could maybe use it as an underlay or put it to the side, kind of like a little bit as, um, let's say, a reference or an inspiration. So we can maybe tap in 16 centimeters and you see how small that image now is. And let's zoom in a little bit. And I would like this lower part of the bottle to be resting on where the red line is, because that's actually the ground. That's where X, Y, and Z have their zero point. So I have to move this image up. What I can do now is you see, for example, here, Y, if I click on the triangle, I can move this one up a step. Or for example, if I left mouse button hold and then drag left and right, I can also slide through the values. But you see this actually goes in pretty quick steps. So I can in addition also hold shift. So hold shift, left mouse button, and then slide. And you see this actually works a tick better. However, I would like to know where my marker is for the height of 16 centimeters. And we actually can make use of the 3D cursor for that. So here I can type in 16 centimeters. Obviously I make sure that X and Y are zero. And there we see actually where 16 is. Now I can use this actually as a reference. I have one, one centimeter air above and roughly one and a little bit more below. So let's say maybe, how does this look? Maybe, yeah, 0, 9, 5, that seems to work good. And then I can go ahead and maybe see what happens when I adjust those values. 0.5, uh, this actually gets pretty close maybe 20, yeah. And again, keep in mind, this is a perspective photo and it's not going to 100% match the geometry I'm going to create. So there are different ways actually how we could build this model. I'm going to mainly focus on modeling techniques that actually are very similar or basically the same how we would work in Alias and in Fusion. So you see actually that even while we work with different um, geometry types, solids, surface, and polygons, essentially the modeling commands or the process is always the same. So what I would like to do is first actually create horizontal rings that define kind of like this bottle, because essentially the bottle could be created kind of like through a lace process or a loft process. So rings will be very, very easy. And I'm going to create a wireframe model first, simply to study the proportions. Okay, so to create the rings, we could use the add menu for circle, or I could press shift A and then go to curves and circle. Perfect. 
Uh, that circle is pretty big. So there are two ways to adjust this. Let's zoom in a little bit. I could press F6 on the keyboard and then that opens actually the previous dialog, so the add Bezier circle. And there, for example, it says radius. And I know actually, let's start maybe with the top, that the ring has to be uh, 35 millimeters wide. So 35 by two millimeters, that's 1.75 centimeters. And you also see actually it says 16 centimeters. And you see the radius here is half actually the dimension, which in this case also is, well, a distance from the one side to the other side, so the diameter. Perfect. So this is kind of like the top part. Now if you move around or you rotate, you see, whoa, where's my stuff? So we could go to view and then view selected or press the period on the numpad and then it zooms in to where our part is. So this one I would like actually to duplicate and move down. So I can press shift D, do not press the left mouse button and you see then you can actually freely move this one around. And then just let's place it somewhere, click. But obviously this is not where it should be. And this one should move down seven millimeters. So up here, for example, we could go to X, overwrite the value, set it to seven. And then this is 16 minus seven millimeters, which will be 15 centimeters and three millimeters, or in short, 15.3 centimeters. Press enter. And there we are. Roughly below is actually another small ring that comes out and it, the diameter is actually 3.7 centimeters. So I can press Shift D, press Enter. So I made a copy and immediately position it at the same spot. And now I'm simply changing the dimension. So you see, I'm actually not scaling the geometry with a scale command. I simply change the position, rotation, and dimension through the numeric values. Okay, perfect. This one, we have to make another copy. So Shift D, and I would like to move this one down. Once you press Shift D, you see you're already inside the move command. And you see here and also here, for example, the values, how much I'm moving it along X, Y, and Z. I would like to restrict it to only move along Z. So I press Z, just tap it, don't hold it. And then when I move my mouse up and down, you see how the Z value changes. This one has to go down five millimeters. So to do this, we can on the numpad enter 0 0.005 you see five millimeters if i remove one zero you see it's five centimeters and you see with my arrow key i can actually here upper left corner change between the positions and currently this is actually moving everything five millimeters up i would like that to go down so I simply hit minus and that flips the value to the negative area and press enter and there we are. Let's press one, go into your front view. Perfect. Right at that position, there is another ring that actually has the diameter of 37 millimeters. So shift D, enter. And then here we can type in, um, 3.5 millimeters. Oh, sorry, actually it's 3.4, not 3.7, there. Whoa, uh, there. And so you see if, if I type in 3.34 uh, millimeters is exactly the same as 
3.4 centimeters, which uh, is what Blender will display me when I type in 34 millimeters. Okay, good. So that's kind of like defining the top area. And let's actually create the next rings for the bottom area. So Shift D, Z, move something down. And maybe start with the bottom. So we set this to zero. And the bottom ring is has a diameter of 5.2 centimeters. There. Perfect. Shift D. And maybe by accident you moved it to somewhere else. So let's do another exercise in cleaning up object positions. This should be at two centimeters. And this ring has a diameter of 64 millimeters. We have a copy of this ring actually right here. And that is at six centimeters. So this one moves four centimeters up. Currently, this is actually set to two centimeters. So I actually could use the grid snap in the next move. So I press Shift D, Z, hold Control because that turns on the snap and move my mouse up and you see it actually snaps in complete centimeter steps. If I release Control, I can move it freely. I hold Control, it snaps. Perfect. In between, for example, our two smaller things, so Shift D, Z, Control, one centimeter up. And this is, for example, a tick smaller. That's actually because we also glue the label in there. And then Shift D, Z, hold Control, and move it two grids up. This should now be at five millimeters. And in case this is a tiny bit off, not a big deal, simply go in and I will write the value. Perfect. Now actually, now we can see that our photo is a little bit off. So and we could, for example, maybe adjust the bottle. Probably the height here is wrong. The way how I scaled it, because this includes the cap, 16 centimeters is just only the bottle. So let's see if maybe 0.1. Ah, I see that actually seems to work because we can still use maybe the width a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. 0.1. Yeah, maybe like this. This seems. Looks like they actually they use a different bottle in the photo than the bottle I have, but okay, good. So the next step is actually we would like to create a side profile because currently everything we have are the rings to des describe kind of like key features of that design. So what we're going to do now is click the lower ring, say Shift S, cursor to select it and you see it snaps to there or we could also say shift s cursor to center and you see the 3d cursor is positioned xyz at the center perfect press 7 to go into top view then go either to add curve and bezier or shift a curve bezier and zoom out a little bit that object will be pretty big Beziers in Blender are similar to Beziers in Illustrator, just on steroids. That would be awesome in case uh, Illustrator could work the same way our Blender can sketch with Beziers. We have to go into edit mode and adjust actually those curves. So to go into edit mode, we can do it here or simply press tab. Press tap again to leave it, press tap to enter it. See, one key, two functions. And press A to select nothing, press A to select everything, and then simply press S to scale it on. 
Now you see this dot actually, this handle is rotated. I would like this one to be flat. There's a very simple trick. We are actually going to set the, through, uh, the pivot to 3D Cruiser and then press S and Y in top view. And you see I'm scaling everything to the 3D Cruiser along the Y axis and press zero and enter. And there it is aligned. Perfect. Now, a few things we would like to change. Those handles are really confusing, so we turn them off inside curved display. And let's rotate a little bit. And maybe let's move this one up. And maybe let's go to here. And this point, I actually would like to be where that um, 3D cursor is. So with this point selected, I can press Shift S and say, now move my selection to where that cursor is. There, perfect. So next step. Currently we're working with a nice and smooth busy, but actually it's faster to work first with a linear representation. And to do this, press A or A to have everything selected. And then either you can press the V key to set the handle type, or we go to curve and then segments, uh, sorry, control points, set handle type, and we actually set it to vector. And with vector, that means we always have linear, well, vector lines. Now, we actually would like to set our snapping also to vertex. And now, for example, we can do the following. So this point, for example, I would like to snap to there. So I could press G and Z, so it goes up and down, go to, with my mouse to this curve and hold the control key and slightly move maybe around, oh, there it is, and click. And now this point I would like to be here. So I press G and X, move my mouse to there, hold control, and there, perfect. Now in 3D view, I quickly want to draft all these lines. So with this point selected, not the handle, the, the point, press E for extrude and then Z to go up, hold control, select the height, and then GX, hold control, and then you see you can go to the to the site. Maybe in this case now we could go into an orthographic site view because in this way we can do everything at once. E, go to the end of this line, E, control, E, and control, and left mouse button click. Uh, up there, this is going to be a little bit more tricky. Oh, there it is. That's actually, I think, inside it is. And then E and hold control, left mouse button. E and control. Let's rotate the view a tick. E and there. E and control. Okay, let's press seven to go into top view to see if everything is correct. Let's say by accident, maybe something like this happened. This is a little bit off, so not a big deal. Instead of undo everything, we simply move this one along one axis and snap it to the rest. So I could, for example, press on this one and move my mouse to one of these points and then hold control and release my left mouse button. Perfect. Let's do this one more time. This time I, I use the Y key, so G, Y. Go to here, hold control, and then press left mouse button. And then go to the side, and G and Z, and G and X, and control and click. Perfect. Now in this moment I actually would like to turn off the background image a little bit. So there's actually now a very flat kind of course profile. 
And if we take a look at the background image, we see certain parts are actually rounded and some are not rounded. So this is now actually where we switch the handle type selectively to, for example, we could now maybe in this case actually use aligned. This will be pretty good. So aligned for this one. And let's click this one, V aligned, click this one, V aligned, and press tab to leave the edit mode. And this actually doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty close to the way how the actual product is. However, this down here looks kind of wonky. So with this curve selected, press tab. Now we have to actually move those handles a little bit. So I would, for example, like to move this handle straight up. So I'm actually going to switch back to bounding box instead of 3D cursor. And I can move this one up and, for example, and hold control, release my left mouse button, and there it is adjusted. This point actually should be roughly three millimeters up along the Z axis. So what we could do is actually drag on this one and you see how actually there is a control point value for Z. Also there we could type in three millimeters. And there you see this is actually moved up. Also, when I zoom in more, you see this is now a millimeter grid. This is now a centimeter grid. This is now a 10 centimeter and a meter grid. So the, the grid system is pretty smart and it updates nicely. These handles currently are not horizontally. And why is that important? So take a look at this. I press in object mode, shift D, R, Z, and then 180. So I made a duplicate and I went into rotation along the Z axis, 180 degrees. So you see actually that these two lines meet really pointy. So in case we would lathe this, we would get a really pointy yeah, shape here, not really what we want. So I'm going to actually, instead of Shift D, press Alt D, and then R Z 180. And then I go back to here and select this one handle, move this one up, and with Control maybe align it. And now you see actually because these two handles are horizontally, so this side is flowing tangent actually to this one. Oh, we could actually also do same with this one actually. This part we don't really need. In this case this is the only handle we really have to work with. When we push this one out we can make the transition bigger or smaller. And again if I move this one maybe up we get again kind of like a pointy transition. That's because these two lines are not tangent to each other. And then maybe have it like this. Perfect. Let's press tab and maybe pay attention to how this looks. You also might have noticed that this line actually updated. And that is because Blender works with two types of copies. Shift D is just making a copy and Alt D is making a clone. So just as a quick demo so you understand what this means, I have made two more clones. I go to here, select this one and adjust it. One clone something, go into a different clone, adjust something. So you see they all actually use the same curve data. Because essentially an object is just a box where you put stuff in. And inside an object you can put in the same geometry, for example, this curve. Okay, so next step. We can actually remove this curve, so 
left click on it, press X and delete it, click this point. And I actually would like to have a revolve command. And for this, we can use the modifier. So this is the wrench icon. That's where we can add kind of like features and we select the screw command. And then for steps, we type in maybe 64 and we go to add and for example, say split. Okay. And let's take a look. And you see it actually what the screw modifier is doing along the Z axis. Uh, pay attention to what happens if we switch it this way. It is actually revolving the profile 360 degrees with 64 steps in between. And then it creates that object. The nice thing of this process is if we go ahead and for example, click one point, you see how everything updates. So one profile drives a complete object creation. And currently this object is on the same layer than all my profiles, which is not really what I maybe would like to do. So um, I can, for example, make use of my layer system. So with this object selected, object, and then go to move to layer, and then click on the second icon. And this is the way how the layer system works in Blender. You have 20 layers, that's actually quite plenty. And then clicking on one or shift clicking on the next one or the previous one, you can switch between the layers, you can add visibility of different layers. And then with selecting an object and pressing M or going to object and move to layer, you can move objects between layers. You can also use actually on a normal keyboard your one to zero keys above your letters to go between the different layers. So, and then the keys on your numpad are your views. Pretty easy and functional. And actually I noticed here, this is a little bit pointy. So let's see what's going on here. And uh, I understand actually what the problem here is. This is actually set to smooth. Those are set to being still linear. So I have to set those two aligned as well. And uh, we get some other not so good garbage. So click on the X orientation or G and X and then control here, G and X and control. So you see these lines are actually are facing each other. And then that actually cleaned up everything. A tick, oh, this looks better. Could maybe see what we could do if we move these parts around a little bit, but we only need to glue in the, um, the label. So this is actually okay for the moment. Splines are actually very good tools to quickly and efficiently create very basic geometrical shapes together, for example, with the screw command. Or for example, if I undo uh, those two features, simply to create a profile. And I'm going to move this one back to layer one, because essentially all those are just my cross section and side profile drawings I need. Because Blender is a polygon modeler, and that's where the strength is. And this is actually going to be now our next step. So far we have established kind of like the framework, the wire model, and now we're going to create actually the object that's going to fit into it. So what we have to do first, make sure that 3D cursor is at the world center. So click, hold, drag down and zero and enter, or shift S, cursor to center. Now we can press shift A, 
mesh and plane f8 and for example say one centimeter now one meter is a little bit too big now this is a polygon model polygons are different than splines splines are basically curves and NURPS is a mathematical surface that's skinned between four edges a polygon model consists out of points and for example an edge and for example a face so for example let's have a quick intro into what a polygon model is if i delete this point i'm deleting those two edges and thus i'm deleting that face i can click these two points press f and draw with f fill a new line or connection between these two points but i don't really have a face yet if i select the third point i'm enclosing an area so a triangle if i press f you see now there i have actually a face so essentially one point and another point can define a line and then three lines connected can define a face if i delete a point i delete the neighbor edges and delete the face if i click the face and delete the face it actually deletes everything because to the face are the edges and the points connected okay so uh, let's press ctrl z to undo everything and what we are going to do now is actually the following we're going to t and then so open the tool palette go to tools go to loop cut and then you see based on what edge actually you put your mouse onto i would like the magenta line to line up with the x axis so the red line so i click and press enter then i can mouse button shift and left mouse button shift and left mouse button shift left mouse button select those other four points press x and say delete vertices and I can press t because i don't need it anymore okay now i have a line this line actually i would like to subdivide um, two ways we can do this select everything and then for example select subdivide and you might not see it but actually point 0.1 point 0.2 point 0.3 this is the point that was created by the subdivision and then we can select the other one and say delete so now we have actually a small line that starts from the world zero point and to double check where this one is let's say by accident your point is somewhere else or somewhere there it actually reads it out so here we want to make sure that this all says zero 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 perfect now with the spline to to continue drawing you always press e to extrude and we do exactly the same actually with our polygon model so we can move this one over there and then press e and press e and press e and you see actually i'm not snapping and that's because later when we start making this model soft it actually will shrink a little bit so snapping in this case would not make any sense there e and x there e and z but actually here i go for the height e and x there e and z perfect we can actually do the same also here give it a screw command and for example say 64 and 64 and let's go to the mesh information and say break my shading so that actually rounded edges are round and sharp edges will be sharp here for example if I turn this one off you see it looks kind of funny and that's because this is a sharp edge and the software tries to shade it like being round and soft but it's not 
So this is, for example, a very, very basic polygon model. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't really look very good. So what do we do in the next step? Well, this is actually now where the sculpting comes in. This is actually something I'm going to reset to six. And this is going to look really coarse, but no problem. And then I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to make this nice and soft, maybe with a level of two. Yeah, okay, and you see actually how it shrinks. And that's the reason why I said don't pay too much attention because this is going to adjust, uh, it's going to, to shrink anyway. And now we have to adjust it, which means I can go press Z to select uh, the wireframe mode, press B so I could draw a selection over those points and then press G and X to move it to the left. And you see I'm pulling out the geometry so it fits a little bit more. Oh, and by accident I moved this one as well. So here, click on the X and control because I was still snapping with the, to the vertex, I could snap it back. But then also here I have to bring this one a little bit to the outside and there. And you can see here that this is not really what my profile is. We're going to ignore this for a second. Not a big deal. Let's play around actually here a little bit with, with all the stuff we have. So this one and there and there, okay. Mm, maybe there, and you see by the way how you position those points, you can create different flows. So this is for example called sculpting. Now on the bottom here actually is pretty flat. That's uh, not really what we want. So I can select this lower part, press W, select subdivide or do the subdivide here, press F6 and say maybe two cuts. Now I have two additional cuts and those last two points, for example, I move up by three millimeters there. So it domes a little bit. And then this one I can move out, tick. Let's go to the other view maybe a little bit more. Okay, and you see actually here I have to move this down a little bit so it touches the ground. Yeah. And the first day we met, I mentioned that sculpting, for example, is a more approximate approach. It is not mathematically very precise in terms of how working with math formulas or like an parametric modeler with rules and constraints, you sculpt more based on, on ratios. But you see starting with precise cross sections really helps you to understand how you have to build actually your model. I don't really like this point. So I could press X, but don't say delete. This is not what we want. I just want to remove it from that line. So I could say dissolve and that takes it out. Because now at this point actually I can move down a little bit and see how this looks. Okay, but the problem is if I move this one out then this is not being straight anymore. So I might actually have to have one or two more points in between. So subdivide, F6, two cuts, and I can actually with these two points selected, press S and scale them apart from each other. And then select all those four points and maybe move this out. And then maybe this one I can move up and maybe a little bit to there and there, yeah. This maybe has to go up a tick Oh, there we're getting pretty close to the way how it has to look. Uh, 
Okay. This is not too bad. Yeah. Okay. So let's move this one actually to layer two. So first layer, profiles. Second layer, our first kind of like proportional sketch model. And I like working this way a lot when I have tubular objects because all I work with is just a profile and then I lathe it. And I know here this I have to sharpen and that's what I'm going to do in the next step. So I'm going to press Shift D and Enter and then press M and 3 to move it on to the third layer. This one actually I'm going to name so you can click on this cube, that's actually the object property and save maybe sketch model. Go to the next third layer, click this object and say maybe sculpt model. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do now is actually apply this modifier. You might have remembered that actually I had this one first set to 32 or 64 and then I set it to 6. So this is actually the geometry I would like to have and when I click apply and then I go into edit mode by pressing tab, look what I have. Now I have all my rings. So this is for example now like a lofted object all those rings are actually lofted together. I could essentially have started with a ring, extruded, scaled, moved it, extruded, scaled, moved it as well, but I find that process a little bit more time consuming. This is actually quicker. Now with shift and click on the first layer, I can bring back my profile views. And now actually I can go ahead and do some other very interesting things. So you might remember that we did some loop cuts. So check this one out. So I can press Ctrl R, click on this horizontal line, click and then move my mouse down. Do you see what happened? It actually tightened a little bit. Let's do the same down there. Ctrl R, click and move this one up. And Let's go to, to this view, maybe control R. And then here actually I move my mouse wheel to have three cuts. Click, press enter. So I don't move them up and down. So let's do this again. I could control R, left mouse button, click, move my mouse up and adjust them. And that's not what I want. I can press zero so they centered and press enter. then to select everything, there are two ways. I could go into wireframe mode, press B and draw a selection over it, works. Or I could also click, for example, all these points, but that's really a lot of work. So I just use the selection tool. Then I select the other selection tool, not the one in the center. And now when I press S, check this one out. Uh, they're scaling away and towards each geometric center. And that's not really what I want. I want them to scale away from each other along the Z axis. So I press and tap the Z key. And there you see actually they only scale up and down. And now you see actually I have really nice and fluid flows. So the fillets, the edge roundings, I actually sculpted it on the fly. And again, um, I can't necessarily really work with a specific radius. You sculpt the shape. So for precision work, this is not ideal, but for fluid work, this is actually ideal. And maybe what I would like to do is uh, Select this one and this one. And then I would like this whole thing to be wider. So S and then Shift Z and 
oh, I forgot this one there. And zoom in a little bit. S, Shift Z, and click with the left mouse button. Okay, this is pretty close. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Let's take a look. I'm gonna compare this. This is pretty nice. I know that this actually is a little bit more rounded. So we can maybe try out the following. I, I select those two loops. So to, to select a loop, you can actually click an edge. So you see I switch between edge mode or vertex mode and then go select. And then where is the menu? Select, uh, is it this one? Nope. Hold on one second, actually, because I, I always use a different combination. Um, ah, there it is. Wah, wah. Edge loops. There. And then shift click this one and also select edge loops. Or maybe those two select edge loops. There. Perfect. And then maybe move this down a little bit. But this is mm, not really good. I would like this to be more circular. So maybe this one, maybe to there, or maybe we scale this out a little bit. Yeah, uh, maybe try it this way. And maybe this one, GG, that actually, ah, oh, there it is. That's what we have to do. So. With G, you can move something. And with GG, you actually slide it along the object. So that's what we need. So this has to be actually a little bit lower, more down there. And then this one, maybe G and Z. Uh, S, maybe scale it in a little bit. G and Z, yeah, this looks a little bit better. Okay, I'm just showing a lot of different tools right now. So I know at the beginning, this is actually a lot to take in. And there's obviously also a lot more, which I'm simply leaving out for later lectures. So if somebody else uh, who is not in my class watches those videos, that's the main reason why I'm not spilling out everything at once. I just built up step by step the, the understanding of the different modeling tools, shortcuts, etc. But our model is actually paper thin. We need to have a thickness. So how could we do this? Now this is actually more our refined model. So Shift D, M, and four. Oops, uh, Shift D, Enter, and then M and four, not moved for centimeters or meters. And maybe let's call this one sculpt model solid because we are going to make this a solid model. So how do we do this? Well, this actually we can set down to two for the moment. So it's not as clean. See, it's a little bit faceted, but it can slow down your display a little bit. So we keep this one at two. Later when we bring this into Fusion, the surface will be perfectly smooth. So what I have to do now is actually create a shell thickness. And let me quickly measure the, the thickness of the glass bottle. That is roughly 2.8 millimeters. So we could go add modifier, solidify with this bottle selected, and then here type in 2.5 millimeters. Let's press N. And I wanted to see if there's a scale factor because this has to be one first. In case you see here a different value and your, your thickness value doesn't really look right in 3D view, 
select your object and then go to apply and scale and it should be okay so with the solidify modifier we added a thickness looks awesome but if we go into wireframe mode so we can see there are some issues because essentially it also offset this thing here which is not really what we need so what we're going to do is actually we're going to apply this surface because currently we still only have a flat shell so in object mode click apply and then go back into edit mode and there you see now we can edit actually the newly generated surface for us so instead of building the surface more ourselves we simply use an offset command to create it for us and what we have to do now is actually get rid of some of that stuff so i have to rotate my view a little bit to see where i am and i know here this ring i have to delete and this ring i have to delete and this ring i have to delete actually this one i delete as well and then I can click this edge and when we go to select linked or simply um, press L over this line with your cursor it selects everything and then delete vertices and we cut actually that part out so problem is now we have a hole not a big deal you might remember that actually we can with F draw a line between two points. Check this. We can actually select an edge and an edge and press F and fill in a face. Obviously you have to select the correct edges and currently it's a little bit difficult to see with all these lines there. So let's turn the ability off to see through the object and we also turn this on so the polygon cage is projected onto our subdivided surface object and now this is actually very easy to navigate there perfect and then maybe we could turn this one off again because you see some of those points are actually inside the surface okay let's take a look the top part doesn't really look good. This is actually too sharp. So what we're going to do, maybe two loop cuts. Okay, one loop cut here, one loop cut there. And then I select these two loop cuts. And let's say in your case, one loop cut is a tick lower. That's not very good. So what we're going to do S Z zero. So you see they're lined up and then we move them all together up and that actually sharpens that corner and maybe yeah we can leave it this way perfect nearly because this area is open so what we have to do here is simply we go into the wireframe mode go into edit mode and you see there are actually vertical lines and now we can press C and brush over this edge. This is actually what defines there, this opening. And then when I press X and say, you know, in this case, remove the edges, not the vertices, it snaps close. Perfect. And there is actually now our Illy bottle. Now for those who are actually familiar with a solid modeler like SolidWorks or Fusion and you would like to have a fillet and for example you would like to round those corners more precisely controlled, we can do this. And what I'm going to show now is actually optional, but for extra credit, everybody who will do it uh, will reflect that inside the grading as well. So I'm going to select actually those edges here. 
and then there and I think there is one there go to select and then edge loops X and then we are going to delete those edge loops so you see they're removed and let's turn this one on for a second okay perfect good so this is great so now I'm going to select this 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 and say select edge loops and then here actually we can set the bevel weight and I set this one to one and then we are going to add a bevel modifier move this one above the subsurface set this to weight set this to 0.2 millimeters set this to four not say five turn this off and say here 0.7 and let's take a look. Nice, nice and crisp. Now, for example, we could say one millimeter or we could say 0.5 millimeter. And you see actually what happens is the following. So this is our very basic polygon model. I painted those edges and I tail the bevel modifier to round edges with a 0.5 millimeter width but only those edges that have a weight. It's actually those edges. And then this polygon result is being passed to the subsurface modifier, who is then actually smoothing everything out. So this works actually really, really ideal. Now let's say this top one, we would like to have a bigger radius and here we would like to have a smaller radius. So let's say maybe one millimeter. And for the top, that works great. Obviously here it doesn't. So that's not a big deal. That's actually where the weight value comes in. So one millimeter is equal one, so 100%. So what we're going to do, select these three edges and select loop. And then we say here 0.5, so 50%, which means 50% of one millimeter is 0.5 millimeters. And there we are. So you see now we have one bevel command, so one edge rounding, different values. What does this profile actually mean? This is actually somebody who knows what tangent G1 and G2 is. We can actually go from a very circular to a more G2 or the opposite actually we can inflate it so this way you can adjust the profile I would never use something like 0.5 because this is linear and then the circle immediately starts maybe like 0.7 always looks a little bit better so the line comes up and then slowly and then quicker turns and then it slowly fades into the line again. Yeah, that's basically it.